Hi, this is the bad boy, Joey Chanel, and you're listening to the Going In Raw podcast. Joey Janelle always goes in. This is the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and you are listening to Going In Raw. Hey everyone, Kenny Omega here. In case you didn't know, we have an awesome kick butt show called Stephen Larson's Going In Raw, and they're going to be supporting AEW every week amongst many other things. Goodbye and smooch. Good night. Bye bye. Hey, friendo, Steve here. Yeah, Larson. Yeah, welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson, available wherever podcasts can be found. And of course, tape live of the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. Have you ever wanted to watch Stephen Larson play some WWE Battlegrounds? Have you ever been interested in Randy Orton battling Yokozuna, the dream match that never could happen but now does happen in WWE Battlegrounds? Well, that's what we did today over there at Friendo Club TV, which you can get access to via Twitch sub, a YouTube channel membership, or give us $5 on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. It was just one episode of five bonus episodes you get all this week and then five more the next week and five more the next week and so on and so forth. That's right. In perpetuity. Friendo Club TV. What's a, Do we have a catchphrase, a slogan for that? Catch, uh, 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 Friendo Club TV. You get a lot of stuff. <laughs> great. Great. What a great slogan that is. Oh, man. All right. So, anyways. Uh, AEW Dynamite is what we're talking about tonight. Yeah, that's right. Larson, what's on our thumbnail? What's the lead story? What was your biggest takeaway from tonight? Oh, that tournament. They got a tournament to... Well, here's the thing. So there's this tournament they announced. Uh, eight-man tournament to determine new number one contender uh, for uh, AEW title. However, the finals take place at full gear. I didn't know if they meant the championship... Me- the, 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 the t- Yeah, JR did not do a good job explaining it. So I'm basing what I'm relating to you on the Fightful write-up about it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And according to them, that's the situation. Okay. It'll conclude at full gear, I would assume, depending on who wins. Okay. Uh, The title shot would then be... But that's not the pay-per-view until February. November. Oh, they've got to do something big in... Oh, you're right, huh? Yeah, I don't know about all that. I mean, Kenny, so the first three names are Jungle Boy, Ray Phoenix, mm-hmm. and Kenny Omega. Mm-hmm. So with Kenny in it, you got to think he's a favorite. Okay, so Hugh Along Heavy has some clarification here. He says, I All think right. both the finals and the title match All are right. at full gear. AEW released a tweet that said, where they will receive gotcha. a title okay. shot. Okay. Uh, so either it concludes right before full gear or it concludes at full gear and that's where the title I mean shot that based is on the sound of that it would it would it would seemingly conclude at full gear and then later on that evening so that person would get two uh, matches the finals of whatever yeah that's still yeah it could be ready either way it's, it's a huge eight man tournament single elimination the finals will be at full gear where the winner will receive a shot at the AEW championship that okay no yeah that could be the other way red, too red either way like they where they will win the championship at full gear the opportunity for the championship at full gear or they will actually get the championship shot at full gear it feels like yeah i mean uh, yeah i i, I i'm gonna i also susp- I'll, I'll i'll throw this one out there number one kenny's totally gonna win this thing uh it's gonna be kenny omega he's gonna win and I think they got to have a bigger build towards because it's revolutions in February, right? Yeah. There's a better chance there's going to be more fans in February or maybe even less <laughs> if things start going backward. Um, so maybe that's a thing. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Mox has seemingly every single week got a new opponent. So it's not like they're waiting. They're going to have this big build. Like he could probably have an opponent at full gear also. Dispatch of them. I mean, if he if if this thing with Kingston's group continues, I mean, he could that maybe that could be where he faces Penta. You know, maybe next week he gets the blade. Maybe the week after that, uh, mm-hmm. or two weeks after that. Well, he got he's he has Archer next. week. He has Archer in two weeks. Okay, in two weeks. Okay, mm-hmm. and then about two weeks after that is full gear. 
It's early uh, November. About three, three weeks after Okay. That. So maybe we have Mox versus Penta. That's a matchup you and I are both hoping for tonight. Yeah, I was really hoping that would happen tonight. And if they're saving it for pay-per-view, you know, all the better. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's hopefully in the coming days they'll provide some measure of clarification on if the title shot is actually at full gear or just the winner of the tournament uh, is at full gear, you mm-hmm. know, because mm-hmm. that tweet could be read either way. It totally can be. Um, I suspect the winner is going to be Kenny because think about this. It, the winner ends up being Kenny. And then you have a good three months to build Mox versus Kenny. That needs to be a huge build as opposed to these mini builds that, he, that he's had. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I could totally see that being the case. They could do a lot with that. There's a lot of now, story there. I guess there. the question is, uh, when that announcement was made of tournament and that Kenny was in it, it was while uh, Paige was on commentary. And he was upset by that. Mm-hmm, sure. Um, what are the odds that our finals for this particular tournament are Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page? Hold on. Let me do some math here. Uh, it's a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, it is a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I don't think you need to write down any math. hundred <laughs> percent. So I imagine Paige stormed off the stage and the first place he went to TK, TK's <laughs> office, went to TK, pounding his fist on desk saying, I want in this tournament. Uh, cause what he wants more than anything is Kenny's validation. That's not going to happen, uh, in a tag team contest. It can only come in a one-on-one bout where Paige wins and Kenny uh, in, vic- in defeat uh, extends his respect to Paige. Mm-hmm. However, that's not going to be the outcome. Uh, Kenny will probably defeat him and then belittle him. <laughs> uh, that's more likely what's going to happen. <laughs> yes. Until they have their rematch for the title, at which point Paige will win. Uh, Kenny then will have no choice. No choice. No choice. But to say, I respect you, Paige. Yeah, I respect you, Booker Man. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. I love tournaments. You love tournaments. This oh, is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so that's cool. Otherwise, I thought it was a solid AEW. I think it's been a while since they've had a wonky episode of, of Dynamite. They they seem to be on pretty firm footing these days. Hey man, you can't we can't really complain when uh, one Billy Mitchell shows up. <laughs> <laughs> I I got admit I popped a little bit when Billy Mitchell rolled in next to Miro. That cracked me up. Okay, so sadly, I missed that entire thing. I don't know how. I have no idea how that happened. I think Alabama came up to me for a second because I, I was like, okay, what did I miss here? I went to your notes and I was like, I didn't see any of that stuff. It was weird. I was sitting there too and everything. I was looking at the TV and then I think something happened and yeah. then I had to deal with it. And then and I saw in your notes, like, oh, that sounded delightful. Was it delightful? Yeah, it was fun. Mira was, Mira was fun in that whole segment. Billy Mitchell. That was great. <laughs> oh, that Billy Mitchell. Yeah, from the King of Kong. Are Kong. you serious? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's obscure. That is and great. He, and he looked the exact same. That's not shocking. Same head of hair. Yeah. Didn't look like he aged a day. Had a crazy suit on. What a delight. Oh, I, love I mean, it. he comes off as kind of an a-hole in King of Kong, but it was just a nice little... Because uh, uh, it is a relatively obscure reference. Yeah. Oh, he was... That he was dropped in there. I think that was a big work for the documentary, man. That guy was playing up his persona as number one a-hole on the arcade circuit. I think He was that's, healing it up. Oh, I think he was healing it up. Um Boy, oh boy, what do you think about this first match? Ricky Starks versus Darby Allen. It was pretty good, although I my, my internet gave out for a portion, like the middle section of it. So <laughs> I a, saw everything bef- up until the suicide dive. Saw all that, and I came back uh, right when Darby hits the stunner, and then uh, uh, Starks responds with the spear. Everything in between I missed. I assume uh, uh, Darby, early on, uh, was doing some, some real technical stuff on the mat. Working That's, over yeah. Stark's arm, I assume he was working over his arm even further because that played into the uh, his arm and his lower back. Uh, I assume that played into the story of the match, the part of it that I missed. Yeah, that's no, that's it. You got it exactly. You, you're able to deduce that uh, perfectly. Uh, Darby had Ricky basically handled a lot of technician stuff. Uh, Brian Cage came down. He was taken mm-hmm. out though by one William Hobbs, uh, but that was enough for Ricky to get the advantage. That stunner he hit. I'm sorry, the. Uh, the uh, the stunner and then the springboard kick. Ricky counter with that spear. That spear was oh, man. Great. Holy great. crap! I, I am such a huge fan of both these guys. But Ricky Starks, man, dude, this guy is the, he's going to be so huge in the future. Mm-hmm. He's so mm-hmm. good. Uh, mm-hmm. there, there were two. That coffin drop on Ricky's back was pretty great. Uh, yeah, that got Darby Allen the win. That there suicide dive from Darby looked rough because it looked like Ricky's head 
like swam back into the barricade a little bit. And that always the suicide dives always freak me out. But ever since I saw the one that ended up uh, being the main cause of death for uh, La Parca, mm-hmm. uh, oh boy, I just I get so freaked out. I don't know, mm-hmm. I'm such an old man these days. But well, that, that's a move that, that seems so like weird. it could very easily go wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was really really terrific stuff, though. I really like the uh, the preceding. Uh, Darby Allen had his little video package uh, where in the body bag he rolls down that hill. That was who was that stuff. dude talking? Oh, I forget his name. Somebody in chat will probably have it, but they meant Excalibur mentioned it on commentary. Oh, okay. I missed I missed the name. That he looked familiar. I just I just couldn't place the name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Ricky Starks versus Darby Allen. Really, really great match. So definitely, it was a lot of fun. Out. Yeah, that was that was like uh, 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 oh JPEG Mafia. Quality. JPEG. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pay-per-view quality match. It really was. It really was. Like, that probably should have been at that last pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, Eddie Munster comes out. He's got a wallet chain on his jacket. Uh, he has an interview with Dasha. She's like, hey, how are you feeling? And then he talks for like 20 minutes straight. Yeah, like he's talking in riddles, basically. Like, what is all this? It's so, a roundabout way of saying, sure, I'll t- like Hollywood came a call and I answered, but now I'm back here and aces and I don't know, man. I just wasn't into it. I, I yeah, I you know there are worse people that you know could take fifteen minutes of my time talking. Definitely, this was this was pretty solid stuff. It's he's Cody embraces the cheese, you know. Uh, so yeah, he says uh, she's here's like, the thing mm-hmm. here, here before we get into this. Here's the thing. I, it's just I feel like he's changing the cadence of his speech because he feels like he's a new iteration of Cody. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I feel like he's telegraphing it way too much between the hair and the suits with the, the chain the on hot it pocket and stuff. Suit, yeah. The hot, po- hot it, topic suit. <laughs> yeah, it just feels like a bit too much talking about um you know, uh you know, wrestling hurt but don't wrestle injured. Yeah. You know, but the breaking of the body is secondary to the spirit, all that stuff. I get the point. Yeah, I don't know. It just He's always pretty big in the in the melodrama. You know, he uh, is. It, this and, just feels and, like it's 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 not. There's no. There hasn't been any steps to that. Yeah, he's gone. He comes back and he's like, yeah, he's like broken Cody now. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you covered. You. I mean, you we're basically covering a lot of it. He says, uh, "Al Snow, my mentor, always said you'd wrestle. You, you wrestle hurt, never wrestle injured. Uh, but like you said, you know, what if the injury is in the spirit, not the body? He says, you know, before the pandemic, we all would shake hands backstage, not out of respect, but because we need each other." He said the marquee is you versus somebody else. So imagine my shame when I lose the TNT title in, thir- in three minutes. Uh, he says, as I was healing up, I got a call from Hollywood, and the I three, jumped two, at three. it. Yeah, the 323. Three. Uh, not the dirty 818. Uh, he says, I'm sta- sitting hey, there man. next to. <laughs> I listened to 818 the entire time. <laughs> He says, I'm next to Rosario. I ditched that number ages ago, you nerd. Uh, I'm next to Rosario Dawson. She's a great actress, Snoop Dogg legend. Uh, and he's like, and who the hell am I? While I was gone, my ear was to the ground. I hear people talking about the future being the ace of the company. He's like, the thing is, that can't be me. It's either going to be Sheeta or Mox or Brody Lee. He says, his answer is no. And then I popped. I was like, oh, cool. He's moving on to something else. He wants well, I, no part of this. I like that he said, you know, uh, uh Optics are important in wrestling, and the optics of this match is that it's unsafe. And I'm a, a EVP of this company, mm-hmm. as if to say, a, I can't put myself in that much danger. B, the optics of that match, while I'm the executive vice president, is bad for the company because it's brutal, is violent, is bloody. So no, I'm not going to do it. And when he said no, I was like, all right, cool, I can get it. This, <laughs> this, this, here's a wrinkle. Okay, this, cool. not what I was expecting. And he turns around, like, no regret, <laughs> no looking back. <laughs> They answer much different than they leave. Uh, yeah, accept your challenge next week, and then a huge brawl breaks out. Yeah, it's just it's it's for me. It's I just feel like it's gonna. This sucks because Brody Lee's totally gonna lose that belt. It, that sucks. I know, man. I know. It we sucks. Have, just, Brody yeah, Lee is like the best thing in AEW. He really is. But you know, like you said, maybe this will springboard him to to even something. I don't know what could be my only thing more. He'll go on a rampage, title. hopefully. You know. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, maybe maybe that'll be even more entertaining. Uh, we both just want to see Brody Lee with that title and the millions of Chili's money. Uh, yeah, more riding mowers for for Brody Lee. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the brawl went on forever. It's pretty. This is a pretty long segment. This is a really long forever. segment. Forever. That's the only thing. About, other thing about Cody, he'll book himself plenty of time to do whatever he wants. to Oh, a luxury of time. A luxury of time. Yeah, he is. Ma- 
I don't like using the word self-indulgent. But oh, you, that's the term. That he is can the be term, self though, right? Indulgent. Yes, yeah. he can be very self-indulgent. What he's doing right now with, with the new hair and the new suits, speaking slowly, is all very self-indulgent. You could do one of those things when you get the point across. I feel like it's it's for in his in his defense, it's got to be difficult for him to gauge how much is enough or too much or not enough because for a spell. And who knows, maybe even still, if there are crowds there to gauge this stuff, because you can't consider what they have now, real crowds. He was the hottest baby face in the company. Oh, he was. He was. And it wasn't even like close, really. I, you know, and so for from his point of view, as a person who is the EVP or one of the EVPs of this company, okay, what's going to draw? I know I'm a draw, or at least I was. People like me. I mean, do you saw people came, were coming to his defense left and right in our comments, mm-hmm. you know, because even a little bit of shit talk, they'll come down on us over yeah. there, Precious Cody. It's all in good fun. This match is going to be really good. Oh, it's going to be great. And, yeah, I'll be sad when Brody loses, but it'll be a fun match, and, and I'm sure Cody will, will, will bleed all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as is kind of a prerequisite for one of these type of matches. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I might have quibbles with Cody's presentation. I think it might go a little too far in terms of communicating what he wants to communicate. Um, that being said, uh, he has a, a, a great respect and admiration for the tradition of pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he'd put himself in this type of match without wanting to put forth an effort that could be held in the highest esteem as far as dog collar matches go. One thing also that we have to keep in mind is AEW is not WWE. Whenever somebody we like has the title in WWE, we want them to hold on to it mainly so that we can keep on seeing them on our TVs. We want them to be in prominent spots. AEW, they're not like that. Like when you if you drop your title, like Jericho, still in a really prominent spot. Like mm-hmm. he's still featured as much as, as anybody else, more so than most. Um, they have a really good balancing act. I think Brody will still continue to be super entertaining. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he will. Nothing else. He'll still be on being the elite. They'll still have something for him because he is. He's done a really good job of late. He'll get tons of TV time. It, it'll be fine. Um, so after that, we had an interview with FTR and Tony Schiavone conducting the interview. Uh, first, they bring up best friends. He says we did them a favor last week. They're uh, you know, they're all blown up and, and they were not 100%. Uh, talk about Jurassic Express being uh, glorified. Oh, wait, no. Who did they say were uh, glorified back? SCU. Yarders? Oh, no, that was Best Friends. That was Best Friends. Best, okay, they were still talking about Best Friends being glorified backyarders. Yeah. Uh, and then he says, but SCU are, are, are former champions. Uh, we need to get. We need to beat them to solidify our legacy. Dax says, uh, he's asked about the Young Bucks, and he says, you know, what have they done essentially to deserve a title shot? Nothing just because Meltzer, Dave Meltzer gives them a ton of stars. That's not going to cut it. The interview is then cut off by uh, by Matt, who comes in and super kicks Tony. Yeah. And then FTR is like, why'd you kick him? We're right here. Kick us. Mm-hmm. As Matt leaves. After Matt that would, basically S- ignores him, yeah. Yeah. Uh, an SCU interview is pretty brief. Uh, Scorpio Sky just talks about, you know, getting back into the tag team wrestling. It's been a while for him. He's been uh, going after singles pursuits. Um, <laughs> but opportunity knocks. And then Kazarian says, oh, we're going to win. We're going to be two-time tag champions. And as they leave, uh, they walk by Sean Spears, who wishes them, I assume, uh, more specifically, Scorpio Sky, good luck. Yeah. This was a very pro wrestling promo that they dropped. Why is Scorpio Sky, was it something, uh, Daniels, is he uh, busted up or something? Who, Christopher Daniels? Yeah. Christopher Daniels is a uh, works in the front office. I think he's like the talent relations guy. Well, he had a match two a week ago on Dark. Yeah. I don't think he wrestles very much these days. He just had a match a week ago. Yeah. I'm not saying he doesn't wrestle match. at all. That Scorpio Sky's going to be a singles guy. Well, he says opportunity knocks. This is for a championship, man. I guess they know to a title. A title <laughs> he's, not, he's not winning any other, so I guess you're right. Uh, after that, it was announced the eight-man tournament for a shot at oh, the title. Oh, we completely skipped over this match. We completely skipped over this bout. Oh, <laughs> that's right. This was, the, this was the 20 minutes of uh, a brush with greatness. Yeah, this was yeah. bunk. It was a good match. The match itself was really good. Uh, it was you know all sorts of back and forth and stuff. Uh, the finish saw uh, Tully 
Well, number one, they got Daniels ejected by just like doing it like a, they, he didn't do that anything. That was pretty funny. That was, that pretty, was pretty funny. funny. Uh, and then Tully held down the foot of Scorpio Sky as uh, they were that, pinning him. Before that, he tripped him up while he was trying to do a Yeah, super. yeah, that's right. Yeah, he tripped him, and then he held his foot down. But Sky's other foot was all over the rope. The ref just simply didn't look at where the feet were, even though he was really close to the ropes. Yeah. Uh, so they pull out the win. I was really hoping for a 20-minute draw, and then FTR picks up the win because it was a draw. That's, I feel like that's more likely to happen on pay-per-view, where they will actually give a match, a tag match, 20 minutes, as opposed to on TV, where time is precious. Um, so Paige was on commentary throughout. A lot of talk about booze. Of course, it's, you know he was asked about uh, maybe someday going for the tag titles again. He's like, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm still cool being in the tag division. And then you know it was brought up that Kenny uh, has their interest in that. And then uh, at the end of this match, it's when they announced the tournament. To crown a new number one contender. Mentioned earlier, first three participants, Jungle Boy, Phoenix, and Kenny. This upset Paige greatly. Just gets up, storms off. Well, he didn't. He wasn't. A, he was. He was very disturbed by it. He wasn't like in a rage. He was just like no. But he was. He was he very was, jovial and drinking the entire match and, and cracking jokes. And so as his, soon as his they attitude said did that, a complete one eighty after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally, totally. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't slamming his fist on the announce table, but he was. You could tell he was upset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that we had Isaiah Cassidy versus Chris Jericho. This was a really fun match. Boy, um, that senton, especially. that top rope senton. Holy crap. Did you see? So this is the secret thing that I asked our wrestler friend. Mm. Uh, after he came crashing down on Jericho, yeah. uh, he goes for a pin. The angle they had, he went and grabbed Jericho's hand, and Jericho gave him the squeeze. Uh, to make sure he's all right. Because, dude, he landed flush on Jericho. That looked yeah. rough. Yeah. And I think even so, Jericho kicked out of that one at two. And he had like a big smile on his face. And it was like one of those smiles where it's like, oh, man, he got me good. Sort of chuckling about it because that happens yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but no, this, this is a really fun match. Super fun match, yeah. Yeah, Cassidy was, especially towards the end, uh, using a lot. He was blocking or evading a lot of Jericho's signature moves and then kind of doing those moves on him. So at one point, Jericho goes for a line salt. Cass <clears throat> excuse me, Cassidy gets his knees up, hits his own line salt. I think right after that, hits a code breaker. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was dominating for the better part of the match, even though the inner circle uh, uh, tried to get involved early on. There's this bit where they were set up a match for the Jericho 30th anniversary celebration where uh, Jericho gets tossed with a barricade into Luther, and Luther hits a couple shots at him. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all, I know Jericho and Luther go way back, apparently. Well, there's like, they're um, all over Instagram, like hugging up on each other and, and, and hanging out with each other. Yeah. So this kind of made me laugh too. Yeah. It is. I mean, they saw the up match next week. I'm sure at Jericho's best. I want to have a match against Luther on my 30th anniversary show. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right. Um, uh, but in the end, though, uh, uh, Cassidy uh, goes off the top um, and uh, like with a springboard on his way down midair. Jericho hits him with the Judas effect. He gets the win. Inner Circle hit the ring in attempt to attack Cassidy, Mark Quinn, and then uh, Matt Hardy uh, in the ring to to stave them off. Mm -hmm. Really oh. fun match, though. Jorge says Luther was Jericho's best man at his wedding. Wow. If that's true, that's really interesting. Yeah, I knew they were friendly. I didn't know it was. It, they were that friendly. Yeah. Uh, after I know that, uh, Luther had been on Talk as Jericho, and I didn't listen to the episode, but then the description, it, you know, I mean, it sounded like they were pretty tight. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But. Uh, so tell me about this uh, Kip Party vignette. I so, missed it. So it's Kip and Miro, and Kip's just talking about how, how epic he wants his bachelor party to be. And Miro keeps on saying it, he wants it to be like a Rumspringa, which uh, my understanding uh, is uh, it's like a coming of age period, I think, for uh, Amish uh, teenagers. Okay. Where they reach a certain age and they're allowed to go, maybe it's late teens, early 20s. Uh, 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 I don't know the exact age bracket. It must be early 20s. Um, where they're allowed to leave the community and go out into the world and ex experience life, and then they make the decision whether to come back or to stay uh, uh, away from the community. Mm -hmm. And so Miro keeps on saying that he wants Kip's bachelor party to be like that. Um, and so they go to various places. There's a place where they're throwing axes, and then they go to an arcade. Miro beats Kip at a game. Kip leaves, and that's when Billy Mitchell steps in. <laughs> and he's talking about how, you know, I uh, hear there's this party, you know, the, the the groom wants to be really cool. If you want things to get crazy, I know some people. 
is what Billy Mitchell said. Mm. And Miro's like, oh, okay, yeah. Miro's pretty funny. Like his cut, he's he's he seems like his delivery is way more natural than it ever was in WWE. Yeah, right. Um, he's very comfortable. He's very believable. Yeah, he's very genuine. There's no scripts he's obviously reading from. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was really short, and uh, it was pretty it was pretty fun. Cool, right on. I'll have to go back and check it out. Yeah, like I said, uh, I don't know. Life got in the way, I guess. Uh, after that, uh, best friends had an interview. They were interrupted. Uh, here in my notes it says by best friends, but clearly it was FTR uh, mm. <laughs> saying that basically running them down, saying they're nothing but comic relief. But that's OK, because we need comedy relief around here. But they're always going to be in the mid card, not where we are. Uh, uh, best friends, give them the give them the mad dog. And then uh, FTR Flinch and Orange Cassidy called called them weenies yep. in advance of his match against the Dark Orders. Ten. Uh, Ten. I love Chuck's shirt because it was his dog. Is either his dog or Trent's dog? Because I know Trent it was has a dog. dog. Yeah, it was a dog. It was a dog of some sort. I got to get one of those with Gypsy on it. It's like a portrait of a dog. Mm, a lot of silliness uh, with the Dark Order in this match. Yeah, they Ten dominated his... for a vast majority of it too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, I like that he hit. He hit essentially an end of days early on, and Orange kicked out at one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Commentary is really putting over. You know, uh, Orange Cassidy went through hell last week. Brody Lee. You know mm-hmm. how much does he have still left in the tank? In the end, he was able to pull out. What was his, what's the name of his uh, that finish that he does? Uh, I think they called it beach break. Okay, okay. Well, it's like an air raid crash, but mm-hmm. you don't grab the the head from behind. So I mean, it looks like you're kind of dropping some on their head. Yeah, right, right. Look cool though, especially Good. as quickly as he did it. It looked pretty nasty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, this fun match. Yeah, it was a fun match. Uh, this next bit was pretty great. So oh, this uh, was, MJF this was really good stuff. MJF is outside of Chris Jericho's locker room and he's giving the cameraman crap. It's like, come on in. So he goes to the locker room with Wardlow. And Wardlow is carrying a gift mm-hmm. that's wrapped. And so, he, so he's like, hey, Chris, I just wanted to congratulate you on your win tonight. And here I got you something. So M- uh, MJF unwraps it, opens it, an insider inner circle jacket. So he hands them out, uh, except there's not one for Sammy. <laughs> mm-hmm. And MJF is giving Wardlow crap about it. It's like it, it wasn't in there when you packed them. And Wardlow just shakes his head no. And, and uh, MJF says, I swear this wasn't intentional. Um uh, an accident. Sorry about that. And Sammy's like, what the hell are you doing here? And the Jericho's like, hold on. Yeah, Max, what the hell are you doing here? And MJF just reiterates, I'm just here to congratulate you. Um, and then Jericho says, you know, it's a question I asked you a, a long time ago, and I, I'll ask it again. Do you want to join the inner circle? And MJF responds with, do you want me to join the inner circle? And they go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth the same thing. Jericho puts a stop to it and says, all right, you know, I appreciate the gifts. They're, they're, they're classy. It's a very MJF move. And MJF says, you know what? I, you know, the, you saying that is a very Chris Jericho move. I'm looking forward uh, next week, 30 years of Jericho. It's been a legendary run. Uh, congratulations. So MJF and Wardlow leave. And Sammy is about to call him a loser. And Jericho says, uh, perhaps he's not. Perhaps he's not. And then he lifts up his pinky as he's going to down some bubbly. Some bubbly. It was re- like the timing of this was great. Everything about it was really well done. It was. I agree. It was. It was really. It was really well done. Where do you think this, this? Where do you think? Yeah, this, I was ask you, where's <laughs> this going? <laughs> it's got to be a program between these two. It's got to be. I mean, yeah. I, I don't see Jericho leaving the inner circle or being apart from the inner circle. Like I don't think it'd be as elaborate as MJF joining and then uh, and then like you know cutting him out of it. Um, I mean, it maybe he'll join, but it's got to lead to a feud. I mean, the, both these guys have to be itching to do a program with each other. Well, I would think that if MJF is going to join the inner circle, it's with the idea that he's going to kick Jericho out. Yeah, yeah. Because MJF, is, if he's going to be in any faction or start any faction, he's going to be the top guy mm-hmm. without any question. Yeah, so there's going to be a, 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 a courtship, some bromancing of each other perhaps, uh, I don't Perhaps know. An initiation, even. Well, what what is going to what could possibly break the stalemate of MJF wanting to be asked in and Jericho wanting him to ask in? What could break that stalemate? It would take MJF like actively. I would think actively helping Jericho in some regard. It's one thing to give out jackets. This is one thing to kind of butter him up and, and, and say nice things. Mm-hmm. 
But if Jericho's in a situation, maybe the rest of the inner circle's laid out and MJF comes out and actively helps him win a match, whatever, um, then maybe that's enough for Jericho not to just ask him if he wants to be in the inner circle, to ask him to join the inner circle, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. It should be a lot of fun, though. I'm really looking forward. If they're actually, mm-hmm. that's where the next thing MJF is going to be doing, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be really good. Yep. Um, uh, after that, we had uh, Britt Baker versus Red Velvet. Um, really, really fun enhancement match for Britt Baker. She's at like, I think at this point, probably five and six. I don't know her record was at four and six, uh, but she's going to start racking up these wins left and right now that she's cleared. Um, yeah. Red Velvet's a lot of fun to watch. She's really mm-hmm. good in the ring, mm-hmm. dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the end, Britt Baker, I let her character work in the ring was so good. Like all the preening towards the camera, I thought was so just good. Uh, and, uh, but she won with, uh, she had like a, a, a fisherman neck breaker and well, then, then she had a stomp after that and then a stomp after that, which was pretty rad. She gets the win with that. But then afterwards, uh, she gets red velvet in, uh, with the mandible claw, uh, after the match. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty good stuff. It was. Uh, so next week we get 30 years of Jericho celebration. That's going to be part, really good, man. That is. And part of that is Hager and Jericho taking on Luther and Serpentico. Um, that'll be fun. Uh, mm-hmm. And then we get Brian Cage versus uh, Willie Hobbs for the FTW title, so that it will be defended. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. That is really cool, yeah. And then Cody versus Brody Lee for uh, the TNT title in a dog collar match. Mm-hmm. Which will main event and culminate with Cody winning that title back. And yeah, probably. And he'll probably, get, here he'll probably get super bloody. Yeah, that'll be good. Super bloody. That'll be really good. Uh, so after that, Eddie Kingston comes down with uh, Remsburg, the ref, uh, says uh, he gets to pick. What was the line about people calling him TK? I missed that one, and he winked at the camera. Oh, it's uh, pretty much anybody who wants to, like all the uh, people who want to kiss ass call him TK or something. Oh, okay. And then he said, you know who I'm talking about, and like winked at the yeah. camera. Yeah. Um, I always like that kind of stuff. Anyways, uh, I, I don't have a lot of extensive notes about this. This stuff. In fact, it was fun. It was, team, it was a good team. showing for the butcher, man. No, it was. I saw the like, all the match except the very finish because the TNT app dropped out on me. Oh, that TNT man. app la- leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah. Um, really yeah. So, uh, so Eddie, you know, he comes to the ring with with Bryce Remsburg and the Lucha Brothers, drops his promo, and then uh, Mox comes out. Um, as Lucha Brothers kind of circle uh, the ref. Well, yeah, because Kingston's like, "Hey, why did you uh, why did you call the match last week?" We've been friends forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he says, "Well, my job is." To, and yeah, he stood up for himself. My job is to protect you from yourself in there. We're yeah. friends on the outside, but I have a job on the inside. Then yeah. they start to swarm. Then Mox comes in for the save. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then uh, Eddie calls Mox a tough guy as a butcher sneaks up behind him and says, well, "I'm not your opponent tonight." The butcher is ref ring the bell. Mox turns around. Butcher decks him. Um, it was a fun match. Butcher was working over Mox's leg. Mm-hmm. Hit a bunch of fun splashes. Mm-hmm. That fun uh, splash into the barricade spot was great. That was great. He hit a fun splash off the second rope. Um, yeah, the finish saw uh, pretty much... Uh, so Mox puts Butcher up top. Butcher pushes him off. And that's where he follows with the fun splash off the second. Gets a two. Goes for a clothesline. Mox ducks that. Hits the paradigm shift. And then uses the bulldog choke again. And mm. Butcher taps. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. Man, so I, I guess like, he's 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 using that now to win matches. I got out, I got to the pile driver, and then it oh, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like Butcher was working over Mox's leg pretty thoroughly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, that was some good storytelling there. Mox mm-hmm. couldn't run the ropes at one point. Um, mm-hmm. Butcher looks great, by the way. He's put on a lot of muscle. I feel like in the chest and shoulder area, and his his midsection is shrunk, like considerably. He used to be. He used to have a heavy belly on him. Mm-hmm. He looks amazing. He looks really – yeah, he looks great. It's good for him. Anyways, let's answer some questions. I totally ignored the Discord a couple days ago, so I'm going to start with oh, them man. today. All right. I'll, uh, O-Dog has a good question here. It says, uh, who are going to be the other five men in the number one contender tournament? So we got Phoenix. Hold on. Let me get my math notes out here. Jungle Boy. Phoenix. Kenny. Kenny. Uh, I mean, it's going to be Paige. Paige, for sure. Um... It's got to be Orange Cassidy in there, right? Yeah, you guess Cassidy would be in there. Feels like MJ. Then, well, yeah, MJ has already had a shot, so that doesn't make any sense. Um, 
Maybe there's got to be somebody from the inner circle, but not Hager because he already had his shot. Well, that the only the person would be oh Sammy maybe Sammy probably huh. So that's six. Um. Arshul uh, got it, already got a shot. Uh, I'm going to say, so some people are saying Penta. I'm going to suggest, well, no, Phoenix already represents the family. So I Penta think. Penta might be getting a title shot at full, at full gear. That would not shock me at all. Uh, yeah, somebody in Taz's group, and we already have one guy who's uh, a champion, so that's, that leaves Ricky Starks. Yeah, oh, maybe Starks and then Darby. That sounds right, yeah. That's eight. Yeah, that's the eight-man field. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Uh, let's see here on the Discord. We've got Dr. Steve Winters. Should AW give uh, Sheeta a TNT title-like open challenge, who would you like to see her face? I think Britt Baker's probably going to win that title at, uh, at full gear. Full gear, maybe. That would not shock me at all. She'll rack up like a bunch of wins, maybe win a number one contender match. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacob Tupop, would it be unreasonable to say that maybe being raised by a guy who was simultaneously a head booker and a top star for most of his career may have skewed Cody's perspective a bit? Uh, I think it's informed his perspective. I don't know about skewed. I mean, you know, you can only do what your gut tells you. Um, I'm sure he applies tons of knowledge that he learned from his dad, you know, being a booker and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, you can call it skewed, you can call it informed, educated, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think he probably does the best he can, uh, you know, and the proof is in the pudding. AEW is doing pretty darn well for themselves. Yep. Uh, Frosty, I don't mean to, I honestly don't mean to dump on Cody or anything. It's just we're huge Brody. This is, this is the fan aspect of things coming out. We're not complaining about him using his influence to book himself into really long things, even though he does. Uh, Cody is a world-class storyteller. He is. Yeah. Yeah. We love Brody Lee. We and do. this is the fan in us coming out saying we yes. want him to always win. Yeah, it, probably a lot of my uh, uh, criticism of Cody's presentation now is all just rooted in the in the fact that he's going to beat Brody Lee. <laughs> exactly. Let us be fans, please. That's that's probably what a lot of it is. I mean, I think it is, it is, it is like two ingredients too many to signify change within Cody. What the he's hair got going is on a there. lot. The yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, r- <laughs> Like I know he has like his hair is is dark when he doesn't when he doesn't bleach it, but it's this brown. is like it's brown. Yeah, it's brown. This is like like five bottles of Just for Men. You know. You know that weird substance that like no light. It's like so black, no light can escape from it. Well, that's a yeah. black hole. I'm talking yeah. about the stuff that scientists have concocted. Yeah, that's like ninety nine percent black or something like that. That's what it looks like. He's dumping into his hair. I know. I know. Light I know. cannot escape. Escape no. Cody's hair. No. Uh, Frosty Fries. I have a notoriously bad memory, so this is going to be a difficult one for me. He says, as we near one year of television product, AEW Dynamite, what are the top three TV moments in Dynamite history? And what's one thing you'd say sets Dynamite back from being a better show? The only thing right now that sets it back I think so they have done things in the pet. They used to do more of those like mini documentary type things. And maybe these days it's difficult to do because of pandemic. I don't know. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, I cannot necessarily think of anything they could be doing all that different, all that better. It's a it's it's a killer show. It's a really, it is. really more good often show. not. I mean, uh, if there's one thing to quibble about is. They'll have a run of, of pretty good shows, and they'll have a stinker, and you know, that's consistency. But that that's I repetition, mean, you know. There is always the complaint about the women's division, which is a yes. totally legitimate that's, one. Yes, like I mean, WWE's women's division is actually really loaded, and especially on NXT, they use it really, really well. Um, AEW has always had a problem with that. Always. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that is an issue. 
As far as best moments, I can think of some good matches, like uh, uh, Kenny versus Pac. Yeah. The Iron Man match they had mm-hmm. on Dynamite was spectacular. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one. Uh, I mean, a lot of my favorite moments were were were, were Paige mm-hmm. when he was coming into his own as his current iteration of his character. Yeah. You know, um, all the stuff where he just kind of saunters down the ring with drink in hand and, and you know, hits a buckshot on somebody and then walks away. Yeah, that, that stuff was, really was always stuff. so dang good. Yeah. yeah. So dang good. It's a shame we're never going to see him take fans' beers again. I feel like that's even, even after everybody's had five doses of the vaccine. I still don't think that's going to be a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. the I mean, I know this is very recent and we're literally just talking about it, but uh, Brody Lee destroying Cody for the title. Oh, yeah. Gosh, that was so good. <laughs> was really good. That was so good. That was really good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Um, I got one here. Mr. Bacon says, what a heel bringing a wrapped gift and unwrapping it in front of them. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. I was like, oh, man, nobody's going to say anything about the fact that he brings in this gift and then just starts unwrapping it himself. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, dog, what bad thing happens to Jericho at his anniversary? Am I using my WWE viewer mentality too much? Wait, what's that? Um, uh, Oh, dog asks, what bad thing happens to Jericho at his anniversary or is he using his WWE viewer mentality too much? Oh, no, I think something's going to happen there. Something, something big is going to happen, and it's going to kick. I mean, maybe that's going to kick off the MJF thing. I don't know. It could. It I don't could. know. I, I'm looking forward to it, though. I know Lance Storm. I think Lance Storm was just on uh, Talk as Jericho. Hope maybe they'll oh, bring yeah. him in. I don't know what the travel is situations like with him, but uh, that'd be know. that'd be pretty cool. That'd be awesome. Uh, J- Joshua Martinez asks, how long? Oh, that's funny. His name on here is Joshua Martinez. Get it, because Matt, get the, the ring, Matt. Anyways. Yeah, I get it. How long till we see Hager and Jericho as tag champions? Uh, Ooh, I, that's not happening. I don't think that's going to happen. They're so, like, I think that was just, hey, we need something this week. I oh, will say that we're in the tag division now. Yeah. Uh, Dang MQ, we kind of answered this earlier. So who faces Sheeta for the AEW champ, uh, Women's Championship? It'll probably be Britt. I like that bit during the Dark Order Cody brawl. Where Nyla Rose just hops the barricade and lays somebody out. Yeah, I know. That was great. That was rad. She's great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tommy Cat. What is something that is underappreciated about AEW? He says he likes how Dynamite starts with a match and not normally with a 20 minute skit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I appreciate that as well about Dynamite. Mm-hmm. You, they usually start off with a pretty fire match. Yeah, they do. They do. Something underappreciated. Uh, you know what, man? Here's something that's that could easily be under the radar. We've talked about it before when the situ- when it when it comes up. They're interviewers. Dasha is given she she can she she has personality now. Mm-hmm. She's not that robot person. Uh, Tony is great at that stuff. I mean, Tony is basically serving as like a modern day mean gene. Mm-hmm. Um, I really appreciate that they let their interviewers show some damn personality. Yeah, agreed, hundred percent. Flats uh, think Santana and Ortiz could be swayed to MJF side. They've been overshadowed by Jericho and Sammy, and now Jericho and Hager, FTR versus best friends for full gear. Maybe I don't know how long they're going to wait for FTR and the Young Bucks. I mean, I kind of I may be thinking FTR and Best Friends for the anniversary show and then uh, Young Bucks at, at full gear. Do you think there's any possibility we're going to see FTR, Spears, and Page as that horseman group now? That wouldn't shock me. That wouldn't shock me. And I think they're, they're, they might be doing something big like that for the anniversary show. Could that be. could be a could lot be. of fun. Could be. Uh, Jorge D., uh, which what emo song should be my Chemical Cody's new theme? <laughs> I am not well versed. Neither in, am I in that genre of music. So I I couldn't say. Yeah. Uh, Hugh Long Heavy. What should Kip do? Or sorry, Miro do for Kip for his bachelor party? Uh, I mean you know like strippers or whatever. 
like the normal thing. I don't even do that these days. Well, in Florida, you probably can. Yeah, I'm sure in Florida you can do whatever. <laughs> there, there what, phase a, three? I forgot where I saw this on Twitter. Yeah, they're like on phase, phase 11 now. They're like, you know, jam pay, you know, 200% capacity. Um, yeah, they're they're in phase virus. What virus, huh? There is, there is an image I saw on Twitter of a, uh, it looked like a model from some sort of uh, uh, explanatory uh, 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 3D model of people when they talk to each other and where their germs go. Because yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a red guy and a blue guy. And yeah, the blue guy. Ha- okay. And it said, and on top it said, when AEW fans sing Jericho's theme song in an episode of Dynamite. <laughs> Everybody steps on each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Florida's moving, moving a little too fast on that stuff. They're moving really I mean fast. a lot. I mean yeah. a lot, a lot too fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael, so dope. Uh, do you feel like there's too much cheating on AEW? No, I feel like there's an appropriate amount of cheating. Was there? A, so obviously the FTR match tonight. Uh, Brian Cage tried to get involved in the Rick game. He did to a degree, but it wasn't like a big thing. He did decide the match? Yeah. Um. No, I think I think it's I think it's I think it's okay. I think it's all right. Yeah, yeah. it's cheating is a it's a it's a standard trope in professional wrestling. Yep. yep. Uh, Steve Klein, which AEW wrestler would you dress up as for Halloween? I already know what I'm going to do for Halloween for our Halloween oh, episode. Although that's a is Hall- Halloween's on a, it's on a Saturday. It's on a Saturday this year, so we'll have to do it for like I don't know SmackDown. Oh yeah, SmackDown. That's right. I guess if it was we AEW talent, I'd just cut my hair and be Stu Grayson. Mm-hmm. That's, you should wear a wig and be Brody. Oh, I need to curl my beard out a lot longer than that than mm-hmm. it is. Um, maybe I'll cut my hair really short and like dye it like deep, deep black and be, be Cody. Cody. There you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. No, I already know what I'm gonna do for Halloween though. Yeah, what is it? You'll find out on Halloween. This could be Seth Rollins, aren't you? No, uh, uh-uh. no, no. Uh, Scruff BMX. Who in Dark Order should be in the championship tournament? It'd be cool if Uno was in there. Uh, well, given that Brody's gonna lose his title next week, Brody Lee should be in that thing. He should. Then he loses again and goes on an even bigger rampage. I know this goes on absolute tear. Uh, Rain Trigger. What do you guys think about AEW using jobbers to buff up their win loss records? I love it. It's good. It's yeah, wrestling it has a long tradition of jobbers. Mm-hmm. And if they have a good showing like Red Velvet did tonight, then you're just building up names, and in three years, she'll be you know competing for a title or something. Yep. Uh, Dang MQ says Diana Perazzo has reportedly not signed a contract with Impact. If she loses a knockouts championship at Bound for Glory, is she AEW bound? I don't think that's a certainty. She, she might just want to keep her uh, her be. options open. She should be. She should be. Uh, Flats, there's something huge happening on the anniversary show. Any wild guesses? No dog collar match makes me think it's going to be big. No dog collar match. No, since the dog collar match is next week. Yeah. Not the anniversary show. So he's mm. asking, uh, what, so what's the huge thing happening at anniversary show? Uh, I mentioned the uh, the possibility of uh, maybe the, the, the four horsemen coming together. That could be a thing or whatever they're going to call themselves. Hangman, yeah. Spears, and then FTR and Tully. I think that'd be killer. That'd be good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what other big thing? could happen there i mean given that they've got this tournament it seems less likely that kenny is going to they're going to recreate that kenny mox moment which would yeah, be no. a really fantastic little bit of storytelling maybe they'll have uh, the first time some sort of confrontation between kenny and and, and page mm-hmm, that could be to really kick that whole thing off yeah that could be that could be uh, Gareth, with Halloween around the corner, why not bring Abaddon to Dynamite and add uh, energy to the women's division? That'd be great. Yeah, that would be great. Um, I don't know. I, 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 you know, I've, I've started to watch. I did not watch Dark this week. I should go back and try to watch some of it. Um, but I got to watch a bit more to get my Abaddon 
fix, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, Joe Horace says, what I appreciate about Dynamite is the lack of Kevin Dunn shaky cameras. Oh, that, yeah, that's one of those super underappreciated things, you know? Um, yeah, I just, I like the, uh, I like the, uh, the through line of story also. Mm -hmm. They reference history. They reference relationships. I like that kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we will stick around and answer some more questions for the live Twitch crowd. That's going to do it for us here on the podcast, though. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We definitely appreciate it. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Enjoy tons of bonus videos, including patron-only live shows, gameplay, and vintage 10 for the wins, access to podcast question threads, the Friendo Care Package, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. 